Weaponry has advanced incredibly throughout history, from a simple British shortland musket to full-on fighter planes, but that's only scratching the surface of all the weapons used in wars from 1775 up to 1918. I mean, tanks are not just tanks and guy shooty shooty sticks YouTube. Maybe if I put the category as education, YouTube won't attack me. There are numerous types of firearms, tanks, and explosives, and explosives. And for us, it starts in the Revolutionary War. Call this an American history review, if you will. Most of you probably know a thing or two about the Revolutionary War. If you don't, then you're probably under the age of 10. Army was much different back in the 1770s, most notably because they used swords. According to the American Revolution Institute, the small sword, yes, it, it's called that, was the most common sword carried by American officers during the Revolution. Some officers used the, the, the cut... Cut so cut cut yes or hunting sword a short sword which was basically used as a prop to say hey look at me I'm an officer rather than actually being used to defend themselves but hey first impression matters I guess and horsemen carried a long sword called the horseman's saber but Americans were not the only ones who carried swords in fact there are more than just Americans and Brits involved the French and the Scots contributed to the revolution and all used swords the Brits and Scots used the higher and high Highland Broadsword. These swords were imported from Germany and into Scotland and used by British dragoons. But the Americans took the swords from the battlefields and British supply ships because, I don't know, they probably just wanted it considering it's America. The French carried a sword known as the Epe de Officier. Epe de Officier? De Officier? Yes. Sadly, this weapon was designed for thrusting, making it impractical during combat. But with firearms, why use swords? Which is a question for another day, and the answer is probably because they look cool. I mean, they also use axes and tomahawks, so quite the barbaric tactic if you ask me. Nobody asked. And that takes us to firearms of the revolution. Now, when you think of firearm, you probably think of more common weapons, such as the Asai... Fortnite Golden Scar! But the Revolution shooty shooties were a lot different. I mean, for starters, the coverings were made out of wood, unlike most common firearms, and there was very little variety. And I'll say that with a grain of salt, considering you can argue by saying they use many different types of muskets and pistols, but that's it. The most common musket was the Shortland Musket, or more commonly known as the Brown Bess. This was the standard issue infantry weapon of the British Army at the start of the war. But of course, in the early months of the conflict, Americans seized the weapons and kept them in colonial storehouses. Ooh, I gotta have that. Which is funny, because muskets were by far not the most accurate firearm in the world. Muskets were lethal up to about 175 yards, but were only accurate to about 100. According to the Journal of the American Revolution, normally, the shooter would look down the barrel and align his rear sight, the sight closest to his face, with the front side of the target. This cannot be done with the musket since there is no rear sight. Without rear sight, the shooter's eyeball acts as the rear sight. That would not be a problem if the eyeball could always be placed in the exact same place each time the musket was fired, but it cannot be done. What makes it even worse is that if that one looks down the barrel at one fourth of an inch off target, you're gonna actually be nine inches off your target, and that's only from 50 yards away. <laughs> Plus, the brown bus is actually more than 10 pounds, which is about as heavy as a small microwave oven, so have fun carrying that across the battlefield. Continuing with muskets, we also have the French model infantry musket, the Spanish model infantry musket, and the Pennsylvania Long Rifle. The French model became the most common weapon carried by American troops besides the Brown Bess. Which is funny because they were imported from France and into Portsmouth, New Hampshire. There seems to be a trend of getting weapons from other countries. Oh, wait a minute, the Pennsylvania Long Rifle is made in America, never mind. In fact, the Long Rifle is the most iconic American manufactured weapon and arguably better than the Brown Bess and French infantry musket. These rifles had many advantages, like being lightweight and being way more accurate than other firearms. It wasn't actually used as widely as the Brown Bess or French infantry, which is strange considering it was more accurate, but you do you, America. The Spanish also had their own musket. The Spanish provided supplies to the Americans, including gunpowder and the Spanish infantry musket. It wasn't that much different from the French model. The only real difference was that it came from Spain. But what all of these muskets had in common were bayonets. 
Bayonets are long, sword-like sticks attached to the end of muskets that can be detached and reattached. Just a quick little tidbit so I don't leave it out. Aside from muskets, there were a couple of pistols used. No, not that pistol. This pistol! Looks a lot different, right? Pistols were not at all widely used as muskets were. The reason being that they were only effective with close range. At least that's one thing shooter games got right. The holster pistols were used by officers who would carry them in pairs. They are intended for use in the cavalry, soldiers on horseback. On the complete other hand, the Hessian Dragoon pistol was commonly used by Germans on horseback, working for the British, hence the term Hessian. Holy crap it's Hessian get it right I can't believe you done this. But I kid you not. The Americans decided they need more weapons and captured it. But there is one more category of weaponry that is incredibly iconic to the revolution. That's right, it's the cannons. There are a few different types of cannons including the field gun, mortar, and howitzer. They all look relatively similar except for the mortar which is situated in a block of wood and shoots an exploding shell called a bomb. Literally, this thing is a giant grenade launcher. The interesting thing about this weapon is that it explodes while still airborne and rains shrapnel all over the enemy. Pretty insane if you ask me. Any askers? Oh. <laughs> the most iconic is the field gun, aka cannon thingy with giant wagon wheels. These cannons were lightweight and fired solid shot, grape shot, and canister shot. Similarly, the howitzer was just like that, only a bit shorter with bigger wheels and could also fire bombs. Call it a combo meal of the mortar and cannon. All of these, from muskets to cannons, have only scratched the surface of American weaponry. Which is why... Civil War! Is what I would say if I had enough time, but since this is a project that is due as I'm recording this second segment at 11 o'clock at night, I sadly had to cut it really short. But hey, if this is something that you are interested in, I still have the rest of the script all written, so leave that like for part two about the rest of the American involved war weapons. I might just complete this for fun. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to edit this last bit before 12am.